um, and um, and um, get us underway for tonight. Thanks, Sam. Kia ora tātou, e nui tātou, let us pray. E te atua kaharaua, koe nei mātou, e tukanātou ngā whakamui miti ki a koe. Manaki tia te nei hui huinga, kia pai ai te haere o ngā kōrero, o ngā whakaro, waingi ki tēnā ki tēnā o mātou. Tēnei te inge, te inoi ki a koe, runga te ngā tau tami o kraiti tonga ngā tau kai whakora. Amen. 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 Kia ora, Sam. Thank you for that. And uh, you will all have seen the uh, recording little cloud sign up the top there. So we are now recording. Uh, it will be available um, afterwards on the website, as have been the previous sessions. And as per previous times, uh, remember just to use the chat function to alert me to any questions you'd like uh, to be asked or you'd like to ask. Um, and um, uh, if you just just do them as they occur to you, that will save you uh, forgetting forgetting what they are later, uh, and I'll come to you in the order that they're um, that they're posted. Um, Ian, do you have any words to start, or shall we uh, let uh, let Stephen rip straight into it? All right, Stephen, the floor is yours. Okay. Just going to share my screen. You're sharing the screen. Something having technical difficulties. What can you, can you guys, oh. Share. Yes. What, what can you see? I've, I'm, I, I've, I've seen yeah. Hugh Keen's word, uh, that his yeah. name there. It's saying I'm sharing the screen, but it's not actually bringing up the PowerPoint. Have you got multiple screens open, Steve? Is it sharing? Yeah, you sharing the wrong one. Up, or are you? Yeah. Oh, I can see you background there. Yeah, something I've in the background only... there. Mm -hmm. Maybe lower that one. This is this is the PowerPoint, and this yep. is the the Zoom. Yep. Yeah, just, just maximize the PowerPoint, Stephen. The big square. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Better? Yeah, um, thank you. All right. All right. <laughs> Get there one of these one of these days. But um hi everyone. I've put this together with the help or just with of, of Carol and and Richard. So I won't um I'll be tag teaming with them with a couple of these slides, I hope. Um, sorry, I didn't get it distributed um, before this meeting. I was sort of doing it right to the right to the end. Uh, so the first, I've just got a couple of parts here. Um, I just want to give a, a quick update on the solar array, cover the next gen report that's come through this month, and also then just sort of check in where we left off last time in terms of application refinement and what we really, what can we really, where are what's going on? What can we pitch and is it Things have been happening here, so just, it'd be good to just figure out together what are what um, how to talk to the wider community, what what they want to see in here. So um, this is just a quick update on the solar array array project uh, project. Um, it really has advanced the last couple of months, and it's sort of uh, although it's not just a, a Raglan consenting project, it is a it is an initiative that sort of follows the Raglan way, and I know it sort of should be quite compatible with other things that Rick are doing in terms of reliance on solar. So um, I've sort of given a quick, three quick things. Um, the pro just a project description. It's just installing this. The status. I went to the Water Governance Board as a paper, and the procurement is underway. And I understand the delivery time should be 2021. Was there anything, Carol? Was there anything else you know you can expand on that? Um, not really, just that it, yeah, it's a good initiative that we've been able to do, I guess, by partnering with water care and access to the, the wider water care Auckland. Um, and it will help with the, the power consumption, especially with the if we end up with a new plant as well. That's right. And there's CO2 um, um, emissions savings in there. 
so this so the next part of this this section was just to cover the the um, reporting that we received now from next gen uh, water limited um, cover this the last couple of technical sessions it was just the ability just to, to check in with next gen water who designed several um, systems including the power system which is which we've revisited and you've seen pictures many times now it's just saying is there something that could be a scenario that could work like that in Raglan which is just a land based system and so I distributed that that uh, document um, hopefully it was well received the feedback that I have got is that it that it um, does bring another another uh, just steps it up in terms of innovation and gives some other discussion items so when we did it it was purely theoretical it was just a study of of public land that's what we asked of the of the writer um, the things that it brought to the to the the new things that it brought to the project is just using a new a new model, the Hydrus 2D, which is um, which is just a more more advanced model that really that really takes information and considers um, what it isn't it isn't uh, some some modeling becomes over sort of as uh, what's the word? It, it doesn't um, underestimate things. It gives a real, real, real picture of what can be achieved in terms of so, uh, nutrient capacity and soil hydronics. Um, so it just um, the report, if you've read it, does introduce some things that we hadn't really thought about before, which is is considering um, what what could occur on some sandy areas, what could occur in the middle of winter. Um, when there's water everywhere, the water still has to go somewhere, but there, but there is alternatives to pipes in theory, um, included talking about a drainage system um, of sandy areas where you pump water in, and then once mounding is apparent, you, 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 you pull water out. That was quite new. Um, it talked about how you balance nutrient um, overloading of, so of, of the areas you have Against hydraulic overloading, uh, quite, two quite different things. But in the in the earlier reporting, it um, from PDP, it did highlight that the, the the theoretical phosphorus and nitrogen that would have to be utilised with land irrigation, i.e., taken up by um, biological processes uh, such as growth of plants, etc., or broken down, uh, degraded through um, treatment within the land. So that was um, it was it was the the report that had been received and we, and on the on the, in the earlier months we talked about these three areas and we said that nothing's ever easy we sort of highlighted the um, things that surrounded each of the sites with the Raglan Golf Club it was it was saying there was there was um, tight soils in the area but we did have an enthusiastic partner to consider this reuse option. As part of this this update, I think that now that the report's through, we can we hope to just consider next steps with the pro, with the club, which is to approach the club for further study. And it's just working in good faith at the moment. We haven't decided on a best practical option, but um, really there are there aren't a whole lot of options in this. And at least information gathering would be would be really good, which means just a bit more of a refined study. On the fairways and the and the um, other off fairway areas. In terms of the winery reserve, again theoretical. And my notes from last month that was ne access was never presumed for the winery reserve. It has it has a purpose. It has a legally defined purpose for recreation. And um, it'd be naive just to think that you can just utilize it for something else. You couldn't. There's lots of different processes that would have to be. Occur, if, even if it ever was suitable. Um, so in terms of this, in terms of my update today, um, complex legalities exist and we'll be working through that. Uh, the technical team and other teams will be working through those. At the moment, there, there's still opportunity for information gathering only The um, on that site. The airstrip, again, we, we, we all know that it's very, has a very complex history and it was, it was never, um, it was just an information gathering exercise to include the airstrip. Since then, um, since since 
then I've had an opportunity to talk to key reps from both hapu and the advice from both is just a, a pause on airstrip consideration to allow for um, alternative, I mean, a focus should be on alternative investigation areas for winter flow in the first instance. So that's just a snapshot. Was there any, happy for any other um, technical team members to, to, to just uh, pipe in anything I haven't covered? If not, I'll go to the next slide. Carry on here, I think that's good, Steve. Okay. So again, it's sort of, this is, I'm getting to the, 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 the slide where I'm just trying to further the discussion we had last meeting where I, I produced a couple of graphs and said, um, we've done an MCA now, we've looked at it against the, 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 um, the costs. There's some clear themes emerging. Again, with, um, I'm just trying to think about how could we, what, what's something to pitch to the wider community? And we have, we can talk about um, the, the shortlisted options, but I think it's more, We've, we've progressed beyond that really with the study. There's things that have just, have really have just written themselves off in terms of feasibility, but um, coming to those conclusions, of course, takes, uh, has to be engaged upon, and um, but they will self-eliminate themselves. I'm guessing in terms of the, the columns I've put up there, I'm talking mostly around the, the, the direct marine options, um, the, the feed, we, I, I bought, I um, highlighted the the first and the fourth comment com columns last time, which was the MCA score and the financial. I've just put some feedback comments in terms of Hapu and Community Board because there was more to option selection than just the MCA. There was a, there was our project objectives, and of course, there's the 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 Hapu lens, which we and uh, Maori lens that we have to that we illegally have to. Um, that we would anyway, but we have to put over this project in terms of meeting RMA obligations. Um, so uh, again, the, the the first two direct options, i.e., status status quo or just MBR, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't meet um, in terms of MCA. It's okay, I guess financial it sits there, but in terms of the the wider regular community. And Hapu, it would just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it would go, wouldn't, wouldn't get off starting block. It's not something that um, need to spend too much time on. In terms of fresh water, uh, we did a lot of analysis in terms of determining this, this, the ability for the the freshwater stream to be enhanced by the project. We found out that the health of the stream was better than can be expected. There's life in there, and introducing uh, a toxicant there, especially in the upper harbour. Um, probably wouldn't meet a lot of legislation le uh, legislation in terms of the freshwater policy statement. So then we're getting down to the to the land options, and again, there were there was the L2, which was the the pub the full public land with winter storage, which would would, would require um, l large um, storage basins or dams and gullies. The the cost of land was was just high, just was. So that didn't, that was an outlier when you put them against the LTP budget. L1, L3, L4. Again, we, I'm thinking we might be hitting a, a sweet spot when we, when we look at the, look at this in terms of happy feedback. It's saying, cool, we're not going to make any position until we actually get a, a business case. But what is what is achievable? What is an achievable non-point source option, which allows common a collection, which is something that that's Part of the project objectives, um, and in terms of the existing outlet, that ex ex uh, the, the stub, in terms of um, working towards that, the ultimate goal of having a non-point source to, to to the harbour, there's opportunity to to continue using that. Um, again, with the community board notes, I just put that it's been just highlighted from day one that any community board position will be in would be in step with with hapu which is understandable and, and great so again i'm just these are my thoughts and so in terms of the next slide 
from, from my perspective, or the technical project team's perspective, there is opportunity to to um, to put forward a favoured, a more favourable or likely option for a treatment and discharge for Raglan. It would be, I'm thinking, it would be a, a hybrid of L1 and L2, which is the private and, and public land. Uh, it's reliant on establishing high rate subsurface drip irrigation for winter flow, which is through um, put there in terms of the discharge, it would sit with um, obtaining the large um, areas of raglan soil, which is, large, I mean, that's hectares of raglan soil. That's for the the, the reuse component and the, and the, for most of the year anyway, it's a nutrient re reuse in terms of the winter when, when that's our troubling, that's our difficult time. The sandy soil would would provide the winter hydraulic properties. Um, in terms of why I've said L1 and L2, if we did it in a staged manner, we could get, we somehow we could scrape together public areas, I'm thinking, to, to do the first 24 hectare. Um, that's with the, that's, at the moment, it's partnering with a, with a, um, with the golf club who I haven't, which seems to be appropriate with everyone that, that that's this option methodology has been covered with in terms of the future flows, uh, which accompany growth and um, there'd have to be additional land that would be needed. With that, there'd have, there's, there's, it's critical that there's some um, ability for, there's some uh, sandy soils within that. In terms of treatment, with the areas that are defined, you can work backward to, to determine the appropriate levels. Um, if there is enough hectare of clay soil that could take the nutrient load, um, you could potentially just use a tertiary membrane or filter. You'd have the, um, that's that's subject to having some high rate sandy soils to take that, that, that flow. If that hectare isn't available, there's ability to do some treat to do some treatment at the plant. I'm not quite sure what it is. Where the engineers would assess this to lower the nutrient levels again, but there's going to be there'd be greater reliance on, on making a um, a hydraulic solution work, which would be a high rate yeah a high rate flow to sands. Again, I've put a I've put a little. Thumbs up or thumbs down. This could be if, if we were going to present something to the community soon, which would be great. A really advanced the project. Is it taking it to the to um, giving a an, an indicative way forward, or just um, I think it, I think that'd be better than just having a vote on the shortlisted options, which some of them aren't even really feasible, fatally flawed. So that's all I really I have. There's going to be a lot of time for talk. So can I just let you, um, Councillor Beck, take over? Yep. I'll stop sharing. Indeed, that sounds good. Um, Richard, anything you want to add before um, I go to questions? We've got a couple of them. I, th I think um, Steve really summed it up well, but the Next Gen report really did look and develop a, a concept on um, a concept which was applicable to the airstrip land we sort of like Steve said after talking to Hapu we've sort of realized there'll be complexities there so we, we probably are going to put a bit more effort into understanding what could be achieved at um at Wainui Reserve because there's a lot of it's a huge reserve but like um Steve uh, Ian's put on his chat there's a, a another we've had one meeting with Parks already in this there's another workshop um you on Friday so we haven't even really gone in there properly and understood the locations which might be utilizable and some of them we're looking at were more sandy areas is that that's correct Dave eh, Steve so it would be quite key to um, finding another the sandy areas are rare in Raglan so but we haven't even got and taken our consultants over that site at all so probably until we do that 
we don't really understand what we can achieve on the Raglan, whereas there's been a bit more thought put on the airstrip and, and on the golf course, that's fair, eh, Stephen? Yeah. yeah. If I could just add, just to respond to the other question, <clears throat> one response up to the, um, the pause, um, it's, not, it's just really a check and balance, as I've written in there, um, that I want to do. And with regards to the Wainui Reserve access issues, yes, it's under council's control, but there's a whole raft of controls in place from a community perspective. I'm not you know, well versed in all this, but the, the management plan that's in place, and I think it's out, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, it's out for consultation at the moment as to what can be done and can't be done there. And there's a whole raft of things going on around that reserve. So the timing's not great in terms of having a settled position for us to go and discuss with the reserves team against that management plan at the moment. So just a little bit, um, yeah, poor timing. But it's fair to say that this project, <clears throat> I think from my perspective, this project is with regards to the use of a reclaimed water and putting it onto land that is public in nature, we're pushing the boundary a bit here. And, and when those initial discussions were held some months ago, it's fair to say that the initial um, feeling from people is resistance from the reserve management um, uh, reserves team. I think that, that a great job has been done by Stephen et al to move those reserve people into think about a layered approach to buying or having reserve land, having use above ground, but also use below ground potentially for irrigation and the like. So we're, we're kind of taking them on a bit of a journey. Um, and, and I think that's, it's taken a bit more time than we wanted. So that's just a bit of a frame up for what's happening at Wainui. Is that fair, uh, Richard, Stephen, is there anything yeah, else? Abso absolutely. I mean, it, we can't go in there like a bull in a china shop. You know, there's other users and other considerations. But but we have got some good examples of where reuse has worked and worked successfully. And I think the other thing to stress, if we do change to a land a land based disposal, it'll be it'll be a transitional thing. It won't be something where suddenly that we can't use their outfall. It'll be something okay. That, that will gradually, as we try, you know, we might get the golf course first, then we might be able to move on to another set of land. And and we are looking at other blocks of land for future growth because our fields will need to grow over time to, to do it as the land-based thing. So I think we've backed away. We realised that even thinking about constructing another outfall is, 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 in the, is going to meet a lot of um, resistance. Um, We've got one there that works adequately at the moment. It's been pretty well modelled. Um, so once we decide w what form the land base path is going to take, we'll have to match it with a treatment to, to match what we, we, we're doing too. So that once we've got the land sort of sorted, then we can start thinking about the sort of things we're going to do at, at the plant as well. Yeah. And I, I think I've also mentioned um, the meeting on Friday is also, <clears throat> I think we've... Um, We've bought out the innovation um, side of and, and um, inquisitive side of the parks and reserve team. Um, and just in some off, offhand discussions with them in the corridors is um, they're wanting to maybe, and it may not all, only be Raglan, it's other places like Tecofa we're doing the same sort of thing. They're saying, oh, we need to buy reserves to meet our obligations for reserves to population ratios. We could be sharing budget here to make those reserves that layered approach, wastewater, uh, sorry, reclaimed water being pumped underground to, to meet those needs and then above ground mountain bike tracks whatever 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 so there's an element of that you know innovation coming in here which is just challenging um, people into new areas but there's an element of excitement and I think on Friday when we go through this we'll explore and maybe come up with a couple of gems who knows so that's why we're doing the little pause in response it's not a backward step I think it's actually just a bit of a Bit of a test and just say okay can we innovate further have we really explored everything or have we gone a little bit tunnel vision so i'm just doing that check that's what we're about because we've got to put some serious dollars on the table for um land-based application we've got to be up in front of the governance board and council and we want to make sure we've got a really good process that's um that's been gone through i guess to be and uh, it's a different lens for parks so mm. it might not just be sort of uh, convenient access for community, but all of a sudden soil type might be, uh, mm. you know, a, a key yes. point of, uh, uh, of reference in choosing a, a suitable block. Absolutely. Um, 
How does uh, one of the other questions that uh, came through was how does this impact this pause? Uh, how does this impact on our overall timeline? Because we are at the sharp end of things now. Um, <clears throat> I think the timeline, from my my perspective, we have to adapt the timeline to get the best outcome. And if we have to wait six weeks longer, I'd rather wait six weeks longer because there's no way we will get the best outcomes if we don't just take this pause and just examine where we're at. I sense we've got yeah. to here and we need to just hit pause, go and do that quick bit of work and then come back. And I reckon we might just get a better outcome. Not just might, I think we will get a better outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever we put up has to be a viable viable thing. I, I know people are getting impatient. This is dragged on, but it's it's been a long journey, but it's been an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we've we've answered John and Tony's uh, initial questions, but let me know if I've got that wrong. Uh, Chris, you had a further uh, uh, question there, and then I'll come to you, Gabriel, after that. Um, yes, Steve, what modeling or research have we done say in the event of um we get the land we decide not to do an mbr that the nutrient uptake can be sufficient um what dangers exist say there is an accidental or unintended nutrient overload to the land that they're just that we're discharging say it's the golf course or the reserve whatever um like how, what is the, have we done any risk analysis of nutrient overload then spilling into waterways and affecting the harbour or any other waterways? And do we, do, have we under, understood that risk? The, the, the broader concepts are with, with um, nutrients, which is nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, there's a difference with, with applicate, um, there's a difference with fresh water and, and, and salt water. The, 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 the critical factor is the, the, um, the removal of the, the, the microorganisms and fecal coliforms that could exist. That's the, removing the TSS, making sure that the, the, the treated waste water is, is blasted by UV or disinfected by chlorine. Um, in terms of nitrogen and phosphorus in the middle of, in the middle of winter, um, it wouldn't create a, such a, um, an adverse effect as it would in, in fresh water where it would just could create a, a green just algae, algae mass, I'm guessing. You're right, though. There has, we've done modelling in any case for um, for to understand how the the harbour works in terms of something that was uh, if it was at the golf course, it would and there was an overflow again. It would be there's there's going to be greater retention in, into the upper harbour. Again, that's where we rely on um, the really having a conservative and not overly conservative but having a, re a real process to make sure that that doesn't happen and that's the scrutiny that WRC will put on it in terms of environmental adverse effects. And as far as the fields Chris we the, these fields aren't just we turn a tap on and they all just head out this, you know the home irrigation system we they're rotated all the different fields so we load a certain amount of nutrients and load and then we move on eh, Steve it's a quite a complex system we aren't overusing certain areas and just keeping pumping it randomly into the into the thing it's quite controlled and, and it is monitored any any land-based system has, has a monitoring regime which Steve's probably better to explain or, or Hugh yeah yeah, and I guess the main other part of that was you talked about a hybrid system. Would that mean having an MBR that's activated or some kind of treatment that's activated for when we aren't discharging to land, when we are discharging in another alternative location? Mm -hmm. Or would that just mean discharging in a different way? Or, yeah, just trying to unpack that. If, if, are we talking about... Yeah. Okay, hybrid. I was just talking about we've got the shortlist option. This is This is option this is another option this is a, a, both a public and private land consideration public public land mm -hmm. initially private for 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 after in terms of having both an, M, an MBR 
and and land irrig irrigation it's just that's the uh that's that's that comes down to ltp dollars again it does become a little it does become um unaffor like unaffordable in a way in terms of the money that's available so, so there wasn't just, so when i said it just to clarify stephen so you're saying that it's an mbr plus land hybrid refers to the fact that it might be a mixture of private and public that's the hybrid part yes so there were so in terms of so it's just l1 and l2 which is the the tertiary the tertiary membrane um the, the existing which is uv and ponds with the tertiary membrane with um two different um discharge options which should be public and private land over the length of the consent that's granted and and the alternative discharge or winter flows yeah Where does that, so that the winter the, the winter flow you'd say that you, you go say that what what's gonna what is going to be discharge is it going to be full of nutrients <laughs> that's that's the, that, that, that's when we get the point heads to really figure out what can happen there. Do we draw it out and do we try and make, maximize the storage at the existing plant? Um, what's the solution there? We haven't really got in, into that yet. You yeah. can't just... Or, or in the early days, do we have to use the marine outfall still at certain times, certain season, parts of the season? We haven't really got into how we'll mix and match the, the crossover between L1, L2 and, and Marine 1 pretty much, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and, and Hapu, when you talk about alternative discharge and heavy winter flows, if it did have to go um, through the existing discharge, what um, have you had some feedback from Hapu about how they feel about that? Or like, how do we, um, yeah. So it was it was just if there's a fish saying the existing stub, it isn't, it, it's what we use at the moment. If putting something new in there, that would, be too would be very traumatic and would be would be opposed but in terms of working toward a final solution um that would remove the need for any pipe and if that's that that's where that's where the project should be heading heading to get hapu support mm -hmm. if it's going to be an extra few years till we do those investigations to get to that final solution that that's better than just diving into building a new outfall which um which would be very difficult. Okay, I'll let you contemplate on that, uh, Chris. I'm sure you'll have another question uh, or two in a minute. Uh, Gabrielle, can I come to you? Yeah, thanks, Axel. Um, great to hear of the of the creative thinking. Sounds like you're exploring all um, just possibilities and, yeah, just thinking about the different stages and stuff, so it's good to hear about that. I was just really wanting to make a comment about the Wainui um, Reserve because, you know, we as a community board have just been involved in putting a board of submission and being involved in that um, process. And, yeah, it sounds great that you're working with the team there, the reserves team. Um, I mean, you're obviously aware that there's, it's not just recreation. I don't know, maybe they were thinking of changing that anyway, but that there is quite a big section of farm at the moment, which is not recreation. Um, and there were a few submissions that were put forward that actually were, you know, saying to the council, really encouraging the council to um, get rid of the farm and do something a bit more um, in line with community needs and aspirations. So, yeah, I suppose one question I was asking, what I wanted to ask is, is how um, a hapu sitting on the, the use of the reserve, if that's an option, yeah, I can. It's great. I've sort of, um, I can um, just having good discussions with with um, Taruki and and Angeline, and I guess in terms of the the Nati Mahanga, they they're saying yep, that's the that's Tainui Tainui's um, area to that that they that they look after that. So so they're going to be in, in alignment with Tainui Tainui. The decisions made there. I'm thinking, um, in terms of the the reserve, it's not, this isn't new territory for Angeline. She was it was looked at with the 2000 and the earlier consent. Um, they had 
walkovers, etc. Again, maybe those the complexities existed then as well in terms of and they they would have they would have existed then as well in terms of alternative uses for the reserve. But at the moment it it really is um, it has a purpose for recreation and there's and there's lots of different processes to occur to to, to change that and to and to have a, a multi use. And I think I'm not sure what if that. Um, if Hopi really has a view on it at, at all on that, it's just saying that if it's, they've, they've looked at it in the past. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in a way, you could say it's sort of not great timing because of the reserve management plan, but I think, well, actually, maybe it's perfect timing because it's when we're looking at it quite closely and thinking about changes to it. So it's kind of good timing, isn't it? But yeah, I'm just, I'd be really interested to hear more about um, how you get on there. It just seems like, yeah, it's not like it's all being used as recreation at the moment. So it's not like anything would be taken away that's not already done potentially, not already, you know, um, in use. Yep. Great point. Thank you. Um, any other questions or, or comments? Uh, Chris, you've got another one just popping up there. Yeah, just reiterating what um, Gabrielle said, I know you're talking to the Parks and Reserves team, but if there was a chance, perhaps you can also talk to the commissioners doing the um, Coastal Reserves Management Plan. That would probably be good because then they would have more, I guess, of a picture um, because it's, the board is certainly going to support um, alternative uses at Winery Reserve. And, uh, and I think the community would come along with us as well. I think we've got one of the commissioners on the um, on the video right now, Lisa. Silence. I'm not on the reserves um, um, management review team. Well, I'm sure you'll uh, chew their ear as as necessary. Yeah. All right. Um, am I the only one thinking I want to see John Lawson with a? Uh, Ocean fresh um, cranberry and a bit of Fleetwood Mac breaking it. No, <laughs> no um, I want to see that as well. The helmet. <laughs> In the helmet, yeah. Is he riding his bike or is he walking? I don't know. Longboarding. Well, longboarding. There we go. <laughs> um, John, you paused for us. He's yeah. Um, uh, it's be, be interesting to see what the final outcome is because there's always options up in the air but it seems that uh, we keep looking at various things and um, I'm just wondering whether it is going to be a month or two uh, or whether it's going to be quite a bit longer and I've forgotten when the deadline is for when the intermediate um, permission expires. The, so at the moment we it's the an application's been lodged, and I guess it's it's um with, with WRC and it just, John, where are you? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's longboarding. He's longboarding. Oh, okay. The um, um, that's like all correct at the moment. Oh, you're gonna get some dinner. The again with the with with any of these things, there's the has um. WSC managers have to balance if they're satisfied that things are, are progressing, or that there, there isn't a there isn't a, an ability under the RMA to hold applications for a time without end. But from the start, it was saying, well, we could we could go we could go through and get the consent for status quo, and and it costs X, X dollars in time and energy and for consultants, or would or would it be preferable to, to to really start the investigations to the longer term consent? So it's still an, it's just an application, and the and and the luxury offered, the, the time luxury offered is is really um I, I'm guessing it's going to be a WDC WRC consideration about if it can go it can go forward on that basis. Okay. All yeah, right. I'll just, just clarify that for Stephen. Yeah, I mean an application has been lodged. Our understanding is that a um, a new application is going to be lodged in October, November, for a for a longer term solution for Raglan. So that's why we're 
um, I, I guess we're sitting patient as a, a regulator, waiting for the um, for the community to work with the district to determine a longer term option for, for Ragland wastewater. Thank you. Appreciate that, uh, Hugh. Um, it's a very useful comment. Any other questions or, or comments um, for uh, for the team? Yep, I have something maybe. Um, so just, to, I mean, I was just thinking for a moment, I was like, how painful would this be if after all this work, like surely it's, if at all possible, we've got to just spend the time, you know, you think about the enormous amount of work that has been done to date and the history of this and then the previous amount of work is done years ago. Um, obviously there's a balance in terms, but like really just stepping back a little bit, like it would be really ridiculous, wouldn't it? If we weren't able to take, not we, meaning you, um, weren't able to take that bit of extra time to actually basically bring to roost all this work. Like it would just be bad, wouldn't it? Just really trying to make that point. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's just in terms of just all the energy and the money and that actually if it's not sorted properly now it's going to come around again and this is all going to happen again in like what 20 15 years time or 10 years time so i don't know i suppose just encouraging I, i'm sure you all feel the same all the team would feel the same um yeah be really nice if there wasn't um yeah i suppose if there's just really good connection between the district council and the regional council to really understand you know do they really you know, are the regional council really um, being kept very up to date and, and at the table and, and really have a good understanding of where this is at? I suppose it'd be good to know that, like what, what relationship is happening in that space so that they really get what's happening and the amount of energy and the time and maybe it's a question. Yeah, no, um, no, we're, as a regional council, we, we're being kept well informed with discussions happening with the community in Ragland. Um, mm. and we appreciate that. Um, Stephen communicates every month and, and gives us updates. So, no, very pleased with the progress thus far. Mm. But obviously, you know, obviously, we can't sit indefinitely with, with the application currently lodged um, and with a pending due later on this year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, so that so through you, Axel. Um, um, in terms of the. Um, what one of the team was saying, or maybe it was you, Hugh, in terms of the um, the date later in the year, looking at a longer term option. Can you just explain that? I didn't really understand that, sorry. In terms of, I didn't really understand the two dates. If, it, if there was, if the direction was from WOC saying they're gonna, they need the, 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 the further information, which is being held with um, within a deadline, and they're going to no public no notify it thereafter. That's what it would do, and that would be a public notified application for the status quo. Um, I guess it's sort of it's just a, it's just process, and it might be fine if it was. It would it would it could be a good thing, but again, it would take energies and um, uh, project money to to do it. But that's just that's just life. This is a this is a this is a tricky one. So you're right, so, I get what you're saying, Gabriel. Are you saying, Stephen, that by going publicly notified, that that means that the process, in a sense, is still continuing, but in fact, it's, a, it's giving an option for people to come back and mm. for there to be further investigation work? I mean, it's a kind of roundabout way. Is that what you're sort of saying? Roundabout way of it continuing? Yeah, it's, a, it's funny. It just What it will mean is that the resources that we have now will be tapped out to, to, do, to do that process. It would be... Um, so this the what we're doing now would be it would be difficult to juggle both of them. I mean, it's with with the staff with the people that are working on it. But again, it's um there's both ways to do it. I know what you're saying. You're saying if it's going to be a, a October November deal, and it's sort of like well, this this we think amazing things could happen in in, in two or three years through reserves management plan or investigations of other areas. Um, wouldn't that make sense? In the past, the past um, consenting realm, that was an option that was that was put forward to do a have a short term consent. Again, I think it might be just some internal discussion. Then we get back to you. I think Gabriel, what I'm what I'm hearing is that um, 
and obviously Hugh doesn't, uh, you know, uh, doesn't make policy for WRC, but that they are, that they are um, uh, being kept informed and they're seeing us working constructively with Hapu and community to look at some different uh, solutions that are likely to be more enduring, uh, to be better supported by everyone rather than just ex extending the existing uh, type consent with a marine outfall. Um, but they could at any point pull the trigger uh, to say, no, you've had long enough, so we need, we need a consent in place. Uh, what I hear Stephen saying is if that's the case, it will be the existing, it will be status quo, and we won't have enough um, work faces open to us to simultaneously do the longer term option and the status quo. We'd just be focused on getting the status quo consented and then return. So probably more productive whilst uh, WRC continues to be comfortable that we're actually working constructively and with urgency um, towards the correct longer term solution that we do that. It's a better, better spend of resource. Mm. Are they able to give a notice period to the WDC rather than you say like pull the trigger, which could happen any moment, but um, would there be some understanding that there would be a, a period of time that they would say, you know, we're basically going to give you this many months and that's it because it feels like it's going on? I don't know if you if you're able to comment on that. I, I don't actually know the answer to that. That's a very good question. I mean, the end of the day, the regional council, the best position is that the community and the district councils agree on a long-term solution for Raglan, but also, we, you know, we can't sit on an application indefinitely. You know, we have a responsibility un under the RMA to progress applications. Um, but in saying that, you know, we do have some, some you know, some um, flexibility in how we, how, how we would push a, a territorial authority. Um, you know, clearly you can't redesign a disposal treatment system in a matter of months. It does, it does take some time. Um, and we acknowledge that. I, I guess it's about seeing progress and setting timelines mm. um, that are being met. Mm. Yeah, I understand that. Thanks for that. Okay, thank you. Chris? Um, yeah, I, I thought that the old um, one expired last year and then the new, the temporary one that you're operating on at the moment um, was live for up to a maximum of three years. Is that incorrect? Do you, uh, oh, you, you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, just just to quote the Act here, Section 124 allows, um, for, in this situation, a territorial authority, if they lodge a, a new application within six months prior to expiry of the existing consent, they can continue to operate lawfully. So that's the scenario we've got at the moment. Why can a district have lodged this, their new application? six months prior to expiry, they're allowed to continue under Section 124 of the Act until the new application is determined. Now, through that process, the District Council has identified um, more work needs to be done to find a, a long-term enduring option for, for Ragland. And I guess both councils are um, discussing that and keeping up to date on progress. Um, but yeah, the current application, the current operation is, is lawful. Um, but obviously, you know, we want to see progress. We want to see um, time timelines, timeframes being met, um, because we, you know, we as a regulatory authority, we can't sit on applications indefinitely. As I said before, we have a responsibility to process these applications. But at this stage, we, you know, we are engaging with the district. We're engaging with the community to find a longer term solution for Raglan wastewater. Thank you. Awesome. Th th thanks for being on the call and, and really good information. So looking forwards ahead, was the timeline we talked about last week, Stephen, in terms of coming out to, to talk to the wider public in an in evening forum, is that still realistic or is there still more information that needs to be gathered? Like when, when do you think you'll be landing on what you believe to be the best practicable option or options so that then the community has time because the community will need a good, you know, it won't be just one or two sessions. It'll be probably two months of community engagement that will be needed to really understand and bring the community along. Yes. So all I, so again, with the, in terms of the slides I presented, there was, we, 
um, the wider group, they may they might not want to hear about the short term, the shortlisted options again. Do you think that that might be the case? They want to really get to the the, the pointy bit. So again, it was in the first instance, it was hoping that there'd be a, um, a whole raft of things to to present options, but we know that that isn't the case. Is we're struggling to get really one together. So all I can do is really yeah. put together what I think would be the best the best way forward in terms of a long term um, solution, a discharge and treatment solution. In terms of the, the June meeting, we can, if there's going to be, uh, again, it's just time a chance to build rapport and to, to, to touch base with the wider the wider groups that 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 um that haven't been able to follow this. It's just been so long. I wouldn't want to follow it either. But there's 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 others out there that, that probably want to um that that's saying where what's going on here so having face to face will always will always help with that and again happy to do all that sort of stuff can and i just say something 23 june isn't it uh stephen or oh, carol can you not it's 23 june isn't it that's the community board meeting date and then i think it's the 29th of june um oh, is the public one if I could jump in, I think the at least use the 29th of June to try to bring um, interested people in the wider community up to date with the shortlisted options that we're now looking at have as, uh, as a result of the um, multi-criteria analysis. And then we would look again to do uh, we wouldn't try and belabor that. We'd just sort of go through, so just go through the options that we're looking at. And then once we have actually made some progress along um, um, identifying a front running option, that's, I think, when we'd be wanting to go back to the community again in earnest. So I'm not quite sure I can tell you when that would be, but obviously it's got to be before we put the application in. And yeah. The June 20th, Sorry. could you possibly present? So these are the ones that are in play and we're still um, pursuing them. And these are the ones that are out of play. You don't necessarily have to say what's your favorite and whatnot, but you say this is in play, yeah. but pros and cons, these are now out of play, but have been considered and this is why they're out of play. And that might help and generally bring people up to speed before we then go, okay, this is our preferred option and this is why. Yeah, I think that would be the general idea, Steve. That's that. That was really what we discussed. Are you, you, you're, you're happy with that concept? That it would that be we, just sort of present. There would be nothing. Um, there, there might be some additional theoretical work. I mean, some field work that might have been done. But beyond what I've talked about today, I don't think there's any. There's much more to to present. But that could be enough. It's just to say. The, I mean, yeah. there, there has been a whole lot of information and good good slides that can be made on on why the why the the fresh water option um, didn't didn't work. Uh, it could it could have been quite good. There could, there, um, there's there's all these things can be can be discussed. But in terms of if the, if the key query is when you're going to lodge, have you got an application? That's some of these things that that won't be ready by June. Just for you, Axel. Um, I think, and I suppose that's what we'll talk about maybe um, after eight o'clock, mm -hmm. but more detail yeah. about the 29th. But, um, and you'll be hopefully on that as well, Chris. But I think it will be just really important to be clear about what the meeting's about on the 29th. Like, as I understand, yeah. you won't be consulting with the community about this. Um, like, the community aren't going to be making the decision, is what I understand. Um, that actually, there'll be a recommendation that will go from the Waters Governance Board to Council. Um, so I suppose these, these evenings that you're planning to hold and this information is really just information to the community. I don't, is, that, is that how you see it? I'm, I'm happy to, to, to speak first. I, I'm, the, the, it's, that's essentially right. Um, we do want to have um, uh, community that's been informed of the work that's gone uh, on to date and understand the reasons why we've landed on the you know, one or two options we are going forward with. But you're right, if there's a big vote on the night and everyone puts stickers on, the, on a different option that's already been discarded, 
that's not going to cause the whole project to stop and refocus on that. So in that sense, you're right. Yeah, so it would be really important, wouldn't it, to make it clear, and that's, I think, what we'll talk about after eight o'clock as well, is that be really, to me, it's really important that the community are very clear about what the meeting is about, that actually we're not consulting with you, we're informing you, because otherwise that's, you know, just, yeah, we don't want to yeah. muddle people mm -hmm. up. Yep. Do, right. do you think that in terms of the wider community that it's sort of, it's grasped that it's quite, there, there, has, there isn't a whole raft of just, um, treatment and discharge options that really are, are available. Um, mm. it, it's different to doing some other pro, probably community um, gearing for growth and greatness as is in is co-design as a, as a major theme of WDC, but this is something that's sort of um, quite tricky and it's sort of the same with same with all discharge consents. There's, there really is, there isn't a whole, it's, it's different than just saying, oh, I feel like doing this. There's lots of other things that come there. And I hate for them to say this has just been put on us, but um, I don't know. I, I can mm. only think that can say, here we are. This is what we've done. Is there, do we get any grunts of support or do we get booed, booed out of there type thing? Yeah. And, and there is the other aspect, which I, th I think you guys picked up on. That, that we've got a little bit more um, work working with parks and with our consultant about what is achievable at Wainui Reserve. And that could end up being quite a major part of of this project. So, yeah, uh, we might be just going a little bit earlier, but I, I like the idea of a subsequent one where we have the final, you know, nitty-gritty of what we're saying we can do. Well, I think the idea is that we actually haven't said very much to I mean the idea behind these uh, online meetings was that they could involve any community members who wanted to join in but um, there seemed to be a clear response from Chris and others that in actual fact it hasn't been seen like that um, by the community it's been seen more as a technical discussion which hasn't been useful in general terms for the community so the idea of the 29th of june is that this can be a general discussion to say exactly what gabrielle said which is we've worked through a whole lot of options these are the ones that are, that we're now continuing to work with for these reasons and these other ones we have discarded for these reasons. So this is really just to bring the community up to date. And as soon as we can get more information on um, on options such as the uh, such as Winery Reserve and so on, it's at that point that then we then run some more uh, run another public meeting, do some more information um, online and, and various other things. Whereas this is really a catch up meeting, a catch up public yep. information meeting. We haven't discarded any op options yet. That was that was just it's just recommended ones to, to discard, you know. Yep. Okay, look I think that's useful and uh, John I note your uh, comment there too. Uh, I am conscious we're uh, up to eight o'clock now and uh, people have got other commitments, I'm sure. Stephen, um, is, um, I always happy to take your emails in between times as well. So if there's something we didn't quite get to cover, please do contact uh, uh, Stephen through his email. It's on the um, meeting invite. I'm sure you've seen it there. Um, so with that, I'm going to have one last question, Chris, or comment. Are you, um, so have you, or whoever's going to be doing that from your side of things, been shoulder tapping central government in terms of money for this project? Like, um, yeah, is there any, any movement in that department? I can answer. No, yeah. nothing specific. Um, there is a huge infrastructure gap, which you have seen in the water reform uh, announcements in the recent week. Um, there was 286 million in the um, recent budget announcement, but that's actually all for transition. Um, I think it's fair to say once we get the announcement as to where the regions will be, the new water entities, the transition process comes underway for the next three years, we may see further funding for those adopters, but at this stage, 
there's nothing nothing uh, concrete so there's a little bit of hurry up and wait chris it's uh, yeah. 185 billion dollars over the next 30 years you'd hope that there was a little bit in there for Raglan. Um, but really, um, there's just so much going on at central government in this space that um, I guess it's our judgment. It's best to, to wait for that that next level of announcements, which is actually imminent, um, yeah. and we'll know who to yeah. talk to. Uh, and I've, about. I've been meet, I've been discussing with the person who's in charge of the transition, just making sure that we're well placed. So yeah. I have been having discussions. It's not a complete silence. They, they know we exist and that we will be ready, hopefully. Oh, they've heard of Raglan. <laughs> good, good for PR. Uh, okay, with that, uh, Sam, could I ask you to uh, close us out for, for tonight, please? Kia ora tato. Thank you very much, one and all. Um, now, may the peace of... May, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us tonight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate that. And uh, Gabriel and, and Chris, if you'd like to stay behind uh, and catch up with, uh, with Crystal and Carol and everybody else, good night. Uh, Carol, you might like to remember to uh, switch off the recording unless you want to record the next bit and save the chat, please. <laughs>